So design specifications, what are they? Let's take a look at a definition. We could describe a design specification as a precise description of what the product or system has to do. We want to make sure it's clear. We want to make sure about the function of the design. We want to also make sure that it's based on the customer needs. We've been doing customer needs analysis. We've been writing customer needs statements. We want to use those customer needs statements here in order to write our specs so that we make sure that our, our final design is based on our customer needs. So we want to make sure it's clear that everyone understands what the specification is talking about. We want to make sure that we're using language that includes a metric, something that's measurable, something that we're going to be able to check and determine if we're meeting the uh, target value. So we need a metric, something to measure, something to value. So like a metric would be maybe like a, a size or a power requirement or uh, maybe a, a weight, something like that. And we shouldn't imply specific forms that our design should take. We don't, we don't want to specify what the design is. We want to just, just, uh, specify what is the function that we need to take. And then we want to make sure that we're classifying these as either goals or constraints. So what are goals and constraints? Let's take a look at those a little bit. In general, we can define a goal as maybe a wish or a desire, something that we want the design to do but doesn't really have to. And we can rank those in levels of importance if we want to. And then a constraint is something that the design has to do. It's a must for, in order to be successful. Uh, we can talk about the rigidity, I'll explain that in a little bit too. So some terminology as we talk about these. A goal, again, is something that we want to try to, try to achieve in order to make the design better, but it's not essential for the design to be successful. So maybe, for example, uh, we're talking about the toothbrushes as an example. Uh, maybe the toothbrush lasts as long as possible on a set of batteries is an example. Uh, of, of a goal. Um, we have a metric there is a time requirement and then the value is just that there's, a, there's a, a, no upper limit that we're trying to make it as, as big as possible. Or for example the toothbrush is as light as possible is another example. Uh, that would be the metric there would be the weight and that the target value is as small as possible. So uh, those might be conflicting with each other based on how we choose our design so we might want to rank a level of importance on which of those is, is more important to achieve. So we can have a, a number of goals, and some of these goals actually might relate to some of the constraints. So again, a constraint is something that it has to do. If it doesn't achieve this function, then our design is uh, not, accept, not acceptable. So for example, let's say we decided that the toothbrush had to last 45 minutes on a single set of batteries. That was our constraint that we're trying to uh, achieve. That if it goes less than 45 minutes, we're good. If it's over 45 minutes, our design is not good. We need to change the design. Or maybe the um, toothbrush weighs less than 200 grams is our, our limit for the weight. Um, these both related back to our previous goals, but we can have goals and constraints related to the same thing. That's okay. Um, now we're just saying that, that it has to weigh less than a certain value. Our goal was that it weighed as less as possible. So. Um, now these constraints could be flexible depending on the type of constraint that it is. For example, if it weighed 201 grams, I'm sure it's not that big of a deal, over 200, um, so we're probably okay. Uh, but maybe a rigid constraint might be that the toothbrush has to work when it's wet because obviously toothbrushes get wet, they still need to work. Uh, or maybe that the, the toothbrush has to fit in some type of packaging in a shipping container so there's a size limit on where that has to fit. We can't go over that size because it won't fit in the container. So those could be rigid constraints. So let's look at an example of our, from our toothbrush. And let's say we interviewed some people and they all said, oh, this toothbrush is too heavy. We didn't like it. So, the, so our customer needs statement that we developed from that is that the toothbrush is lightweight. So we have our, our needs statement there. We want to write a spec from that. We could choose a spec to say maybe like the toothbrush weighs less than 250 grams. We have a weight, something that we, that's, a, that's our metric, it's measurable, and um, 250 grams is our target value. So why 250 grams? Maybe we did some benchmarking against competitors' toothbrushes and we found that you know, most of theirs were around less than 250 grams. Our current one's like 400 grams, so we want to make that lower. Okay? So our metric was the weight, our target value was 250 grams, was the upper limit. Um, now, if it weighs 249 grams, that's great. If it weighs 50 grams, that's great. It still meets that spec. Uh, the goal, maybe we might have that goal that said that we want to make it less weight. That would help us choose between those two designs of 249 grams and 50 grams. But they both meet the constraint. Um, along with this example, let's talk about some unacceptable ways we could write the specs. 
So let's just say we just said the spec was that the toothbrush must weigh less. Well, that's kind of ambiguous because there's no target value there. We don't know what less, less than what. If we maybe had the value that we currently are using and say less than some target value, that would be helpful. Uh, we could say that the toothbrush might, must be smaller, but that is implying a certain way to make it less weight. It's a sp specific solution that would be implying a certain way to, to go about it. Also, the toothbrush must have only one battery instead of two would also imply a solution, or that the toothbrush must be made of lighter materials also spe specifies a solution. Those are all possible design concepts, but we don't want to write our spec that way. We want to make our spec to have all possible designs, all, all of those as possible designs. So those would be unacceptable ways of writing our specs. Um, the last one there too, the toothbrush should weigh less than 250 grams. The should there implies that it might be a goal rather than a constraint. So we want to leave that should out and just say that the, that the should should be gone. Um, we just say the toothbrush weighs less than 250 grams. So. Uh, so our customer need statements is what we've been using in order to write our specs. Those customer need statements are usually written in the more layman's terms. We'll call those our marketing specs. That'll be another term, term that we'll call that. And then our product specifications or our design specifications or it's also maybe called our working criteria. There's a few other terminologies for it, but when we're talking about these technical specs, uh, we want to write those in terms of engineering language, something that we can um, check, that we can see if our design is meeting those criteria and leave the um, more layman's term of the marketing specs. So that's how we're going to define our design specifications. And